Alright, so what I'm going to do here is uh, help you understand what proofs are and how to do proofs. So we've done truth tables, and truth tables are a way of proving that an argument is valid or invalid. Uh, sometimes we may want to use truth tables, but other times uh, we won't, because the truth table would end up being so long uh, it wouldn't be worth our time. So <clears throat> think of this argument I've got right here. Um, we could easily construct a four-row four truth table to prove that this is valid. Um, and again, it would be four rows because we only have two atomic components, the A and the B, so that's only going to convert to a four-row truth table, and that's easy enough to construct. Um, but imagine uh, we are trying to prove that this argument is valid, three premises and a conclusion. How many atomic components do we have here? Well, there's an A, a T, an R, a B, an S, an M. That's six atomic components. Um, and if you have six atomic components, that's going to come out to a 64-row truth table. So <clears throat> this is an example where we would want to use a proof, because a proof is going to uh, allow us to prove that this argument is valid without going to the trouble of constructing a 64-row truth table to do so. So <clears throat> what we're going to have to learn, what you're going to have to memorize, um, are these patterns of argument. And I'll go over those here in a second. But there are eight valid forms of argument, valid argument forms, I should say. Um, and you'll need, you'll need to know what each of these are. You'll need to uh, kind of memorize these patterns. Um, so they all, these are, the first two are Latin names, and then they all other, all the rest of the argument forms just have these names. And so what I'm going to do is going to go over, I'm going to go over each of these. I'm going to start with, um, I've got these little tables here. I'm going to start with rules that uh, utilize the horseshoe. So there are three of these. Modus ponens is one of the rules. Modus tollens is another rule. And the hypothetical syllogism is a third rule that utilizes the horseshoe. Um, what I have here uh, in this table is in this column here, the middle column, I have the argument form. So here I'm using like the P's and Q's, and those P's and Q's are just um, variables that could stand for more complex sentences. Um, and then in the right, furthermost right column, I have an example where I'm applying the uh, modus ponens or modus tollens or hypothetical syllogism form with a real live argument, right? So um, let's start with modus ponens. Modus ponens says that if I have a premise or a line in my proof that's a conditional statement and I have another line in my proof that asserts the antecedent of that conditional statement, P, then if I have those two lines, I'm allowed to derive um, the consequent of that conditional. Uh, so that rule is called modus ponens. Um, here would be an example, an application of that rule. Suppose I had a line um, in my proof that looked like this first line here. Um, and then I had another separate line in my proof that looked like this line here, notice that this line here is the antecedent of this conditional. Even though it's complex, right, it still has this same form, right? Again, the P's and the Q's can be complex. <clears throat> so here's modus tollens. Modus tollens has the following form. Again, it start, starts with a conditional statement, if P, then Q. Then the second line requires a negation of the consequent of the conditional. And if I have that much, if I have a conditional on one line and then a negation of the consequent of the conditional, then modus, the rule modus tollens tells me that I can derive um, the negated antecedent of that conditional. And again, here's an example of that. The last rule is uh, concerning a horseshoe is called a hypothetical syllogism and this is what the ancients sometimes called a chain argument you can see why if P then Q if Q then R therefore if P then R right so if I have a line that of my proof that asserts this and a line that asserts this then I can assert this 